Okay, today's topic is graphing lines, and today's goal, hopefully by the end of this lesson, you will be able to say, I can graph lines by making a table using slope and y-intercept and by finding the x and the y-intercepts. So we're going to do, this should be a review of graphing. Uh, method one is making a table of values. And I have a little note here for you that says, uh, to make a table of values, you pick values for x and solve for y. If there is a fraction as the x coefficient, picking values of x that are multiples of the denominator will assure that you have whole number points. So the whole number, since our denominator is 3, uh, to get whole number points, I need to pick multiples of 3, and I'm going to pick the multiples of 3 that surround 0. Uh, so that will be negative 6, negative 3, 0, 3, and 6. Now the math on this is going to work out nice so that that fraction is going to go away for us and we're going to get a whole number answer. So I'm going to start by plugging in this 6 into x in 2 thirds x plus 5. And then I know this 3 goes into the 6 twice. So my question is actually negative 2 times negative 2, which gives me positive 4, plus 5 is 9. So one point that satisfies this equation and will be on the line is the point negative 6, 9. Now I'm going to do that again. Negative 2 thirds. This time my x value is negative 3, so I'm going to put in negative 3 here plus 5, and we're going to figure out what that equals. I know this 3 goes into this 3 one time. So now my question is negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2 plus 5 is 7. So another point on this is negative 3 comma 7. Sticking 0 in is really easy. If I put x into the put 0 in for that x, that negative 2 thirds x term just goes away completely, and I know I have number 4. Five left. So the point zero five is another point that I'm going to graph. Now hopefully by this time you can see a pattern. It looks like our y values are going down by two and since this is a line that pattern is going to continue. So this is going to be three and this is going to be one and my points are three three and six one. Now we just have to put those points on the graph like so. And I'm going to draw a nice line through those points. And be careful that it actually goes through those points. And so there is the line that we just graphed using that uh, table of values. Now I want to point something out on this line. There's two things I want to point out. Uh, right here, where it goes through the y-axis, we call that the y-intercept. And the y-intercept here is 5. And the reason I wanted to point that out to you is because we have a 5 up here in this equation. Right there. And that's no coincidence. That number up there all by itself is the y-intercept. The other thing I want to point out to you is the step pattern here. Which, to get from one point to another, I go down 2, forward 3. Down 2 forward three, down two, forward three, down two, forward three. And I can keep doing that between any points. And that pattern there is called slope. It goes down two, forward three. Slope, we give it the letter M, is given by rise over run. This should be review as well. And the rise is how far up and down we go. And since we're going down two, the slope is negative two. And we're going forward three, the slope is negative two-thirds. So we have a rise over run. And we've actually seen that one before too. Up here, negative two-thirds is that number in front of the x, and that is also no coincidence. This is the slope. We give that the symbol m. Don't ask me why. And this is the y-intercept. We give it the symbol b. Don't ask me why either. So we're actually going to use the slope and the y-intercept to graph it rather than finding all of those points. Here's how to graph using the slope and the y-intercept. Now notice that this method only works if you have the equa equation rearranged to isolate y. And this does, y is isolated. It's all by itself on this side of the equation. 
So we are going to uh, follow these steps one by one. The first one says identify the slope and y-intercept from the equation. Here's the slope. The number with the x is the slope. And the number all by itself out here is the y-intercept. Now this says plot the y-intercept on the y-axis. And so I'm going to go here and plot the y-intercept. And then it says use the slope to rise and run away from the y-intercept. So our slope is negative two-thirds. And I'm going to put that negative with the two. We're going to say that's up there with the two. It's easier to think of it with the rise than with the run. And so this is the rise. And this is the run. And now I'm going to, from this y-intercept point, from this point on the line, I'm going to go down 2 and forward 3 and put another point. Then I'm going to go down 2 and forward 3 and put another point. And I'm going to go down 2 and forward 3 and put another point. Now I can even do that backwards. If I can see my pattern going backwards, that gives me another point here and another point here if I follow it in the backwards direction. And now that I've got all those on there, I can draw a line through it like I did before. And that is graphing using slope and y-intercept. One more way of graphing is using the intercepts. There's also an x-intercept. If I draw a line on a grid like this, there's an x-intercept and there's a y-intercept. And we need to remember, it's important to remember what an intercept is. So the x-intercept is when a line or a curve you might deal with curves later, crosses the x-axis. So on this one, where it crosses the x-axis, this is our x-intercept. Now, I don't have any scale on here, so I don't know where that's crossing. So it's some value of x. But I happen to know that the y-value on that is 0 because it has not gone above or below the axis. It's right on that axis. So the y-value is 0. So let's pull this star out here that just tells us that any point on the x-axis has a y-coordinate of 0. Now again, the y-intercept, and we already talked about it, but I want to put it on here too, this right here is the y-intercept, and again, I don't know where that is. I don't know where it crosses the y-axis because I don't, have a, I don't have a scale on here, but I do know that wherever it is, the x-intercept is going to be 0 because it's right on the axis. So it is not to the left or to the right at all. And that's what this little star is here to tell us, that any point on the y-axis has an x-coordinate of 0. So that gives us an easy way of finding the intercepts. And remember, you only really need two points to graph a straight line. So we're going to find the intercepts of this line. Now, this is a line. It doesn't look the same as the last one because it's in a different form. And we're going to talk about that form later. But right now, we're going to find the x-intercept. And when I pull that out, it gives us the little information that says to find the x-intercept, sub 0 in for y and solve for x. So I'm going to sub 0 in for this y. When I sub 0 in for that y, this actually becomes 3x minus 12 equals 0. And now that's just a linear equation. 3x equals 12. And divide both sides by 3. x equals 4. So I know that my line crosses the x-axis at 4. Now we have to find the y-intercept. So I'm going to pull this out, because that's what it's for. To find the y-intercept, we're going to go the other way. We're going to plug 0 in for x and solve for y. So I'm going to put 0 in here for x, but when I put 0 in there, that whole term goes away. So this is 4y minus 12 equals 0. 4y equals 12. y equals 3. Now we just have to plot those on the appropriate axis. I know the x-intercept is 4, so I need a dot right there. And I know the y-intercept is 3, so I need a dot right there. And we only need two points to graph a straight line. So there is the line that we have 
just graphed. Okay, now I'm going to go through a few of them for you. Um, graph the following lines on their Cartesian plane using an appropriate method. I'm going to go through them fairly quickly. Uh, this first one up here, it's already in a form that has y completely by itself. So I'm going to do that using slope and y-intercept. I would very, very rarely ever make a table of values. But I know that this is the slope and this is the y-intercept. And a slope of 3, we can write as 3 over 1. So I know that my rise is 3 and my run is 1. And what I have to do is go to that y-intercept, the b, at negative 4 and put a dot. And then I'm going to use the slope to rise 3 and run 1. So I have to go up 1, 2, 3, and run 1 and put a dot. Now I'm going to do that a few more times. Rise 3, run 1, rise 3, run 1, rise 3, run 1, run 1. And now I just put my line up. This next equation is also in slope y-intercept form. Uh, I know that this is my m. And with m, um, negative 1 over 4 means that this is my rise and this is my run. This 2 is my b or my y-intercept. So I go to 2 on the y-axis. And now I have to go down 1. A negative rise means we go down. So I go down 1 and forward 4. And I can do that as many times as I want before I put the graph on the grid. The next one is in slope y-intercept form as well. Don't be fooled by the fact that the x comes second. This number with the x is still our slope. So our m equals negative 2, and we can always put an over 1. So this is the rise, and this is the run. And this number all by itself, that's our b or our y-intercept. So that's my starting point. I need to go to 3 on the axis right here. And then this slope tells me that I have a rise of negative 2 right here. That tells me my rise is negative 2 and my run is 1, which means I go down 2 over 1. Down 2 over 1. Down 2 over 1. And keep going. Down 2 over 1. Down 2 over 1. And there's my line. Now, going down to the next one, these ones are not in slope y-intercept form, and they're actually pretty good for finding uh, the equation uh, using the uh, intercepts. So this first one, uh, x plus y equals 5, I'm going to find the x-intercept. If I find the x-intercept, I have to set y equal to 0. That's pretty easy, though. If y is 0, then this term just goes away, and I'm left with x equals 5. And if I want to find the y-intercept, I have to set x equal to 0. But again, if I set x equal to 0, then this term just goes away, and it tells me that y equals 5. So the two points on that line are 5 and 5. So that's here and here, and then we just have to draw our line. This next one is not in slope y-intercept form either, so I'm going to do it the same way. Uh, I'm going to find the x-intercept. To find the x-intercept, I have to set y equal to 0. But if I set y equal to 0, the y term just disappears. And this says 2x minus 12 equals 0. Rearranging, I'm going to add 12 to both sides. 2x equals 12. x equals 6. There's my x-intercept. To find my y-intercept, I set x equal to 0, and if I set x equal to 0, that just means that this term goes away. So what it says is negative 4y minus 12 equals 0. Add 12 to both sides, I get negative 4y equals 12. Divide both sides by negative 4, y equals negative 3. And I'm going to put those on the graph. Um, my x-intercept over here at 6, and my y-intercept at negative 3, right there, and I just need to draw the line. This last one will be done the same way. So my x-intercept is negative 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 
7 and my y-intercept is positive 2 and we just have to draw the line. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is graphing lines.